Hey folks, it's your buddy Fatal Roadie. We're going to be doing tonight's review of uh, Monday Night Raw. Started off tonight with uh, Alexa Bliss's championship coronation. Um, she got in when she got into the ring. She was in the ring with um, Alicia Fox, Nia Jax, Emma Bailey, Sasha Banks, um, Dana Brooks and Mickey James. She announces that the queen is dead. And then she begins to start running down a couple of the uh, women's superstars. She gets up on top of a pedestal. Then she starts getting on to uh, Bailey. Bailey had enough of her shit flips the pedestal that she's on and a brawl ensues we come back from the uh, um, the commercial break and it's a six man <clears throat> six man no eight man excuse me woman tag team um, Alexa Bliss uh, Alicia Fox Nia Jax and Emma versus Bailey Sasha Banks Dana Brooks and Mickey James um, there was a whole bunch, it was a good match. Um, there were a whole bunch of quick tags from Bailey's team. Um, they held a good portion of the offense of the match. Um, it went after, afterwards, it went back and forth a little bit. Um, everyone going into a few spots of where the, uh, Every, it was a free-for-all, basically. Um, Alexa Bliss got uh, DDT on Bailey and got the win. Uh, next match is a singles match of Enzo Amore and Luke Gallows. Luke Gallows? Shit. I forgot his first name. Um... They come out, Enzo's doing his spiel... Um, both at Gallows and Anderson jump Enzo and Cass um, pretty much um, Luke Gallows controlled this whole match um, Enzo came back a little bit um, but um, Gallows won, won, won the whole thing I'm going to guess being that the way uh, things have been in the past couple of months uh, that next week we're going to see uh, Big Cass versus uh, Anderson just guess because it's, it's just it's just the way they, they end up booking these things um, almost coming into the SSDD category at least they made it a singles match I'll say that um, Rollins comes out and says that he wants Brock Lesnar. Finn Balor comes out and they both go back and forth for a second. Dean Ambrose comes out um, and basically says it being that um, Brock Lesnar isn't around to defend his title that the IC, IC belt is the number one belt on Raw. Which I kind of I would kind of agree with him. Miz comes out, runs his mouth a whole bunch, um, and in, in unison, Finn Balor, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose tell him to shut up. Um, Dean Ambrose gets on the phone and supposedly talking to Kurt Angle, um, and then we have a triple threat match of Miz versus Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins for later on tonight. Um, then we have a next match, which is uh, Tony Nese, Brian Kendrick, Noam Dar versus Eric Swan, uh, Tozawa, and Gallagher. Holy shit. There are more people on the cruiserweight division than Austin Aries, TJ Perkins, and Neville. Amazing. Holy shit. 
Um, the te uh, Team Swan starts off early. Uh, they have a pretty good match. Um, the team was uh, Swan, Tozawa, and Gallagher won the match. Um, everybody might want to write this down. I actually liked this cruiserweight match. It was different. They put on a good show. And they even did a bunch of flippy shit. So, good on them. <laughs> um, the next thing we have is um, Seamus and Cesaro come out. And I guess this is official that they have now turned heel. Um, they're going back and forth again, you know, on how uh, how they beat uh, the Hardy Boys, and how their the Hardy Boys are a novelty team. The crowd responds with the delete chant um, as they're starting to leave the the ring. The Hardy Boy Hardy Boys music comes out. They come up at the top of the top of the ramp, um, and Matt cuts a promo. And basically, um, it almost sounds like uh, he is going into his full um, broken Matt Hardy bit, which is cool. Um, they've, they've been talking about bring bring that into the WWE. Um, they said basically one thing needs to be done to Sheamus and Cesaro. Puts and he says, delete. It runs out. They both of them run into the ring, and both Sheamus and Cesaro dip out. So I think we're going to be seeing that match a couple more times. It's it's still new enough that it's not going. It's not burned out yet. But I could, you could easily see the potential of that easily getting old. But for now, it's good. The Miz backstage have an interview with the Miz. Skip it. Um, Dean Ambrose hijacks the interview and starts. Uh, I think he asked if uh, the gel in the Miz's hair gets in his eyes, and the Miz walks away. Um, probably the best part of that interview um, the next match that we have is Heath Slater versus Apollo Crews could be a potential for a, 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 a Crews heel turn maybe um, but I said they should, they should do that because he's not doing anything he comes out with uh, Titus O'Neil um, Apollo Crews wins it it was a it was a pretty short match. Not a whole lot to it, but it seems to be cementing the the, the possible heel turn for Apollo Cruz. Um, but like I said, it was decent. Um, Kurt Angle comes out to give a um, an update on the Roman Reigns. And Braun Strowman match uh, from Payback. Uh, he says that Roman Reigns has internal injuries, and Braun Strowman tore his rotator cuff. And the fun part about all of this is that Kurt Angle said that both competitors say they are not finished with each other, which means. We're going to have more Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. Really? <sighs> Fuck. Um, then all the lights go out, flash, 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 you know, the Wyatt bullshit. Bray Wyatt comes out. Long story short, too late. Um, Bray Wyatt says that he's coming out 
as a savior and he t starts talking to the crowd that he, he says I can fix all of you you probably start by leaving the ring um, Kurt Angle says you know well Bray Wyatt says you know he needs to he, he needs to do stuff and he wants to know if Angle's going to be getting in his way or not Kurt Angle says that this is my show to which Bray Wyatt responds this may be your show but this is my world and then poof Wyatt magic Bray Wyatt disappears only good part of that Matt uh, that little segment then we have an interview with Seth Rollins done by Dean Ambrose another skip nothing really worth talking about there then we have a second cruiserweight match for the night and guess what Austin Aries versus TJ Perkins really we jump right back into the SSDW um it was an all right match as 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 it as it goes um Perkins works a lot on uh Aries knee um Austin Aries comes back for a little bit of offense and get gets him with a suicide dive um he gets uh Austin Aries gets him in the last chancellery T.J. Perkins taps out. So after the match, T.J. Perkins jumps Austin Aries, puts him in a, uh, a knee bar, and yeah, that was it. Then we got probably the funniest part of this whole night. Dean Ambrose comes to interview Finn Balor. Um... Finn Balor says that the Intercontinental title is coming back or coming to the the Balor Club, which I wouldn't mind seeing. Um, Dean Ambrose reaches back to the table, grabs a donut, and hands it to Finn Balor and says, "Eat some carbs." Um, Balor takes a donut, takes a bite out of it, and walks away. And then out from the back comes Elias Sampson, just strumming his guitar. And then Dean Ambrose asks him, hey, do you know any Pearl Jam? That was probably the better part of tonight. Um, the next bit is the uh, number one contenders match for the IC belt. Finn Balor versus The Miz versus Seth Rollins. Um, right off the top, um, the Miz, um, immediately dips out of the ring and tries to get Finn Balor and, and, uh, Seth Rollins just to go at it. They do for a bit, then Seth Rollins and Balor chase, chase out, uh, the, the Miz and corner him. Which Miz starts trying to negotiate between Finn Balor and uh, Seth Rollins to team up on the other person, which neither one of them get. It starts off all three of them going out, going at it. The uh, the Miz gets knocked out of the ring, and. Uh, Seth Rollins was trying to do a suicide dive and Maurice uh, jumps in front or the Miz pulls her in front whichever way you want to look at it um, Finn Balor tries to, to broadside him and the Miz pulls Maurice in front of him to which leaves him wide open to get hit by Seth Rollins um, <laughs> S 
Seth Rollins tries to go to the top rope and the Miz dumps him out onto the ring from the top. So he's out for a little bit. Um, Rollins tries to get the Miz into a DDT. Well, he did get him into the DDT. Um, Finn Balor comes running in and drop kicks uh, Seth Rollins, which puts more force on the DDT onto the Miz. Um, there were after that there were a ton of near falls um, between the three of them. Um, he goes out into the ringside. Uh, Samoa Joe comes out and levels um, Rollins, uh, which leaves Finn Balor and The Miz to go at it for a, little, for a bit. Um, Finn Balor hits a sling blade and gets uh, uh, The Miz set up for the coup de gras, and all of a sudden, flashy shit all over again. It goes dark and Bray Wyatt shows up on the apron and knocks over um, Finn Balor, runs in the ring, hits him with the sister Abigail, and The Miz pins Finn Balor uh, to become <clears throat> the number one contender for the IC belt. Which means we're going to see Dean Ambrose versus The Miz again. We saw this shit on SmackDown. Uh, we're just rehashing old storylines. It would have been nice to see Balor in it. It would have been nice to see Rollins in it. Because those two we have, you know, have not really... Well, we've seen Seth Rollins and uh, Dean Ambrose before. But that was in, it was in the past. They didn't fight all that often. So it would be cool to see. Um, but we're stuck with The Miz. Yay. Um, what if I I would probably say this was a below average raw. I was not too impressed. We had we had six matches. Um, they weren't really spectacular. Um. I would probably say it would be a tie between the women's match and the six-man cruiserweight match. Uh, as as to which what what was the better match of the night? Um, it and, and they do it. They do this quite often, and I'd never touched on this. They do a lot of what's called 50-50 booking. Um, where one team get one team or one person gets one on, one up on the other and then the next week the other team get or person gets one up on the other and they need to stop. Um, it gets nowhere. It's basically leaves everybody if you want to look at a record uh as it stands, leaves everyone with zeros, which do, is not impressive. It's you know, oh cool. So we're basically a tie f against this person for six weeks. He gets one, then he gets one. He gets one, then he gets one. It's old. It's okay from a WWE fan. For a person to get over on another more than once, more than twice, they could flat out dominate the person. 
but WWE won't do that. You know, I don't know. I'm, I like I said, I wasn't impressed with this Raw. Um, hopefully, SmackDown will do better. They usually do, but actually, since this brand shakeup or superstar shakeup, whatever you want to call it, um, both of them have actually been falling since since uh, before I started doing these videos. But we'll see. Um, one can only hope. But I will be back tomorrow night for the SmackDown review. Like I said, hopefully this gets better. Um, tell me what you think down in the comments, what you thought about Raw. Um, hit that like button if you like this. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe. And I'll catch you tomorrow. I've been Fatal Rody. And remember, if it's too loud, you're too old. See ya.